Rage. In Jersey, it was more Mr. Gamio. Mr. Gamio was a Cuban dude, and he ran the boxing program. And I knew his two sons, Julio and Caesar. They got me a job at Putnam Fuel. And they were like, listen, when you get the job, you got to rob. Putnam Fuel is right by Seacock. It's off of Route 3. It's dirty. Truck people go in there. Dirty, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I lasted about three weeks before they fired me. But I left there, and after three weeks, the guy at night was a half a momo. His name was Freddie. Remember I was telling you this? So we robbed him one night. We go, listen, we'll just go on there and beat Freddie up. We were like sophomores in high school. We'll put masks on, me and Didi Cantero. And when he comes out, because in Jersey, you pay the gas guy. You don't go into a store. You know, they pump your gas. So if you rob the guy, you basically rob the joint. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Only Oregon and New Jersey is where the people pump your gas. Everybody right. else, you walk in with a card. So we were kids. We were like, let's rob fucked up Freddie. You know, when I worked there, I got to know Freddie. Freddie's wife looked like Honey Boo Boo's mother. <laughs> Freddie was a little guy, but Honey Boo, he, uh, his wife was like 400 pounds. And the only way she would let him fuck her is if he brought blow home. And he was a skinny, tiny guy like Eddie Bravo. She was like 390. And she would actually put the bikini on. And they, they were such white trash. They lived in a studio apartment. They would rent a jacuzzi and put it in the living room. <laughs> These people were fucking. They lived on the third floor. They had a studio in Japan. Oh, my God. And, and it was it? the worst building in the neighborhood. <laughs> and they had Black Marlowe. She was the only black girl in the neighborhood, Black Marlowe. I don't know what Black Marlowe is today, but she's the real Martin Luther King. She was the only black girl in a white neighborhood in Jersey. Though. That girl took torture. Wow. She got tortured. I always loved Black Marlowe, though. Marlowe was tight with me. Her mother was white. Something had happened. Her house was fucked up. That building was fucked up so i used to go over to sell them blow and i remember F freddie opening up the door and they were like a robe on and here's his fat wife and women with heels with a bikini on <laughs> and he's like thank you for bringing it to me i'm gonna have like he really was like when you brought him the blow he was fucking thankful that you fucking like thank you man i'm gonna get some pussy tonight like she would not give me my hand job if he didn't have blow so <laughs> Finally, <laughs> so finally, one day, me and Didi Cantero, we decided, let's go down there and rob this motherfucker oh. on a Saturday night. Let's wait till about midnight when he's got a grand on him. Because you, you don't drop till you get 2000 So every 2000 you make a drop in the floor safe, and you can't get back in there. So me and Didi went behind the building by Seacock, and it was right next to this hot dog place, Snappy Nappies. The rumor was well, that's where the Iceman killed somebody and put him in a tank. By snappy nappies. No, this is a real fucking area, Jersey. This is, and, and across the street was one of the biggest strip clubs on the East Coast. Not when I was there robbing Freddie. A couple of years after that, like the Army base. So you remember, if you lived in New York, they called this the Air Force base, some base or some shit. But when we were kids, we went there like at 12 and we took Freddie down, dog. We just tackled them and started like kicking them like they kicked the, whatever his name is, in that De Niro movie in the bar. Mm -hmm. And we took his little purse and we ran away. And he guessed it. Like It took him a week. He's like, did you guys rob me last night? Because we had masks on and shit. We're like, Freddie, it wasn't us. He's like, yes, it was. I heard your voices. Then he came back to us. He's like, listen, I'll let you rob me once a month. But you got to split the money with me so I can buy an eight ball to fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so once a month, we go down there and give steady Freddie a beating. And we kick the fuck out of him. <laughs> Just on principle. And he let you do it? Just yeah, so he, he get, wanted to. That's the only way the jump. cops, you know, that's the only way right. the cops. And we did it like eight times. We so robbed. like, did you give him black eyes, bloody noses? Kicked him in the stomach a couple of times. That was it. We need him. Neon belly. I didn't even know what it was. There was no video back then either. No. No. Not so you had to leave marks on him. Yeah, you had to like kick him a few times. I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I had too much of a heart. So I always had to hire. Like I had to bring like one of my crazy friends that was having a <laughs> <laughs> that was having like a bad week. Oh. There's a kid in Miami today that every oh time, God. every time I play South Florida, he shows up with his girlfriend and he gets fucked up and he tells the story when I knocked on his door with a, a diagram on how we were going to rob Freddie. And he goes, that's when I knew that you were fucking for real. He goes, I, I was eating dinner with my family. You knocked on the door and had a sketch like the deal, how you were going to kick him and run into the weeds and go right to the coke dealer's house. Like, I had it planned. We had done it so many times, but I had to keep getting different partners because I couldn't hit Freddie. All I could do was tackle him. I was good at tackling him, and then we went to go down and have my friend kick him a few times. It was fucking horrible, but when you're 16, Joe, what the fuck, though? You got to have a good time, you know? <laughs> you got to have a good time. If you're not going to kick oh. study Freddie, who are you going to kick? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bro, we would rob him once every six weeks.